680's business editor Richard Southern joined us. Uh, Richard, it's the type of stock really no one wants to see, but shares in some companies are surging on news of an Ebola outbreak. Yeah, no one wants to see this type of stock rally. Francis, 17 people have died in the Democratic Republic of Congo, and health officials confirm it is due to the Ebola virus, that deadly hemorrhagic fever. Uh, this is just the latest outbreak there in uh, the, the Congo. Of course, uh, the river in the eastern part of that country gave its name to the virus when it was first discovered there back in the 1970s. What we've been seeing here the last few days is shares of companies that make hazmat suits and other protective medical gear moving higher as a result of this. Lakeland Industries, they make hazmat suits. The stock up as much as 10%, highest since last November. Alpha Protec that make protective masks up some 11%. And shares in pharmaceutical giant Merck up more than 2%. Merck's Ebola vaccine has been found to protect against the deadly virus. Uh, certainly uh, no threat to, uh, to us here, but still investors quick to move in on those stocks, Francis. Well, the price of oil has hit a three and a half year high after Donald Trump pulled the U.S. out of the Iran nuclear deal. Yeah, it's been straight up here for oil the last couple of days, and it gained another $2, uh, 3% today, up to $71.14. As you say, three and a half year high for Texas tea, with the likelihood now that we're going to see a lot less Iranian oil on the market, with the U.S. perhaps going to put sanctions back in place against that country. Uh, this is good news for Bay Street, uh, TSX at its highest in more than two months. As far as the gas prices are concerned, we're paying dearly at the pumps, although we're going down a penny at midnight tonight. So gas falling just slightly tonight, Francis. Now, I thought Siri was a smooth talker, but it turns out that Google's robot can now make eerily lifelike phone calls for you. <laughs> if you're like me and you're not uh -huh. crazy about talking on the phone, Francis, then this is going to be perfect for you. And this is going to be out in the next couple of months. I want to show it to you. Okay. Google's virtual assistant, you tell it what you want to do. You want to make, say, a hair appointment in this case, you tell it, make a hair appointment for me. It'll do it. This is the computer on the left. Take a look. So how can I help you? Hi, I'm calling to book a women's haircut for a client. Um, I'm looking for something on May 3rd. Do you have anything between 10 a.m. and uh, 12 p.m.? Depending on what service she would like, what service is she looking for? Just a woman's haircut for now. Okay, we have a 10 o'clock. 10 a.m. is fine. Okay, what's her first name? The first name is Lisa. So oh, it uses, boy, really? how natural is that? I mean, yeah. the person, the real person on the right didn't even know they were talking to a computer, Francis. And it could actually answer the question, detect the questions, which were complex, and yeah. answer them. Uses ums and ahs and like and what have you. So there's another uh, example of maybe you and I being replaced soon if computers Don't can do that. say that, That's, Richard. Shouldn't be saying that. No one can replace our humor. <laughs> Bitcoin is going mainstream. So uh, Wall Street says, uh, I guess, banks are now getting into the digital currency game. Yeah, they are, and Bitcoin's 10 years old now, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, so Wall Street wants in on it. New York Times reports that the New York Stock Exchange is getting set to open an online trading platform for the digital currency. Goldman Sachs, the biggest investment bank in the U.S., it says it's going to open a Bitcoin trading desk. We've also, in the last couple of months, seen the Chicago Mercantile Exchange get on board with Bitcoin. There's still many big detractors out there. Just the other day, Warren Buffett, the most famous investor there is, called it rat poison. But it seems like it's here to stay. Right now, you want a Bitcoin, Francis, it'll set you back about 11900 Canadian dollars. It has stabilized a little bit mm -hmm. after a sell-off the other month. But, you know, people like to still collect those real coins, and uh, we showed it to you in Entertainment City. There's a new royal coin coming here to Canada. Yeah, it is, and they, uh, they showed it off uh, at the Center for Mental Health and Addiction today because uh, that's a, a, a cause well-known to Harry. He's a big advocate for mental health. So it's the engagement photo of him and, and Meghan Markle. It's one ounce of uh, pure silver, and uh, there's a Shikorsky crystal on there as well. The face value is 20 bucks. The mint, though, is selling it for almost 105 bucks. So a coin there to commemorate the royal wedding, Francis, which is just <laughs> over a week away. Oh, I know you're excited. Can't wait. And what, we got Melanie in going over there she's for the going. royal wedding? She is going, yeah. Exciting stuff, Francis. I think she's going to be right, like, in the third row. Wow. No, she's not. But, uh, <laughs> she'll be your binoculars. She'll be the third street over from uh, wherever it's being held, yeah. All right, thank you, Richard. Here's Adrian.